photographplus.com. If you are interested in learning Arnold 4 3ds Max fundamentally, please make sure to check out our comprehensive introduction to Arnold 4 3ds Max course, which is a massive 8 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Arnold 4 3ds Max thoroughly. Hey folks, welcome back to mograflus.com. It's Khezri here and in this lesson we'll learn about carpet shader in Arnold for 3ds Max which can be used to create realistic carpet materials. You can download the project files for this lesson down below in the description. Let's get started. Press M to open up the material editor and create a new carpet shader. Assign it to the shader ball and run the active shade. Car paints like a standard surface shader has a base, a specular, and a coat layer, and also an additional flakes layer. I don't intend to explain every single parameter in the car paint shader as most of them are the same as in a simple standard surface shader. Before getting into the shader, let's create a metallic blue car paint with this shader just to get familiarized with the workflow. I'm going to use this dark blue as the base color. Set the base weight to something like 0.2 and roughness to something like 0.3. When creating a metallic paint, you normally want to have a very dark shade of the intended color as your base color. Now let's copy this brighter shade of the same blue as the specular color. In a metallic car paint, this first specular layer should be very rough and broad. So increase the specular roughness to around 0.5. To achieve that metallic look, increase the specular IOR to around 6. If you have problem understanding these very core concepts of shading in Arnold, please make sure to check out our comprehensive online course about Arnold for 3ds Max on our website mocroftplus.com. Use the same specular color as the flakes color. and increase flakes density to around 0.2 and normal randomize to 0.1 if we don't want the flakes to be that uh, obvious and visible. The clear coat layer is on and we get that sharp specular reflection on top of everything which is essential for a metallic car paint. Now let's see what we get. And here is our realistic car paint shader. Now let's see how the shader works. Car paint shader has four essential layers, base, specular, flakes, and coat. Combining these four layers, we can produce all sorts of car paint shaders. We have the base layer, then we add the rough specular reflections using the specular layer. And you notice the IR for this layer is set to six. That's why we get that metallic look. Then we add the flakes if necessary and finally the clear coat layer which adds a sharp reflection on top of everything. Now let's zero out the specular weight, flakes density and clear coat weight for now. The base layer controls the base or diffuse color weight and roughness of the shader. For a metallic car paint, you normally have a much darker shade of your defined specular color as your base color. Then on top of our base layer, we add our rough specular layer. So set the specular weight back to one for now. To get that metallic car paint look, you notice the specular color is a brighter, more saturated version of the base color. If we were aiming for a normal paint, the specular color would have been a simple white and the uh, base color would have been a brighter, more saturated version. Uh, of the desired color. So we wouldn't actually use a colored reflections for normal paint. You notice here the roughness is set to 0.5. That's why we get this broad specular, specular reflections and the IR is set to 6 which helps to get closer to a metallic car paint. If I lower it to a normal value like 1.5, we immediately lose that metallic look. So let's set it back to around 6. To achieve that car paint look, we do need a clear coat layer. 
So I'll go to the code section and increase its weight to one. And this gives us that sharp specular reflection layer on top of everything. You realize this is a simple sharp reflective layer with roughness set to zero. You can probably increase the roughness slightly to something like 0 0.05, 0 0.1. But in this case, it's set to zero and IR is set to 1.5 for this layer. And finally, we can start adding flakes using the flake section by increasing the density to something more than zero, in this case, 0.2. and control how these flakes look using this set of parameters. For now, let's turn off the flakes again and get back to the specular section to talk about a few parameters that you might not be quite familiar with, and by that I mean uh, flip-flop and light facing colors. Uh, flip-flop allows you to control the specular color based on the viewing angle. So if you want, you can have different specular colors on the parallel and perpendicular faces to your viewing direction, and this can be used to mimic a pearlescent effect. To do that, let's add a ramp RGB node. And connect it to the specular flip-flop color. In the ramp RGB node, change the uh, type to U, which is by default, and change the black color to red and the white color to uh, something like a yellow. To get an actual representation of the colors that we just defined, we can set the specular color to a simple white. So and now the parallel faces are having this red specular color and the perpendicular faces having a yellowish specular reflections. And you can control the exact way these colors appear, you know, the exact angles, the transition between the two, or even add more colors simply using the uh, ramp RGB node and you know adding uh, more points and more colors and uh, try to adjust them as you wish obviously you would want to use more subtle transitions and colors so let's change the red color to the original sign color and the yellow color to this kind of bright purple color Then we have this light facing color, which modulates the specular reflection color based upon light sources. So if a section of the geometry is facing a light source, it would get the color that you defined in the light facing color as its specular color. Let's see how that works. I'm going to change the light facing color to this uh, bright green color. Right now, because the falloff parameter is set to one, we don't see any contribution from the light facing color. So let's set the, set the falloff to around 0.6 for now. Now immediately this green reflection comes to play. Let's temporarily set the exposure of the map that is being connected to the environment to around negative two. and stop the active shade. Add a new Arnold point light and position it as you wish. Set its radius to about two centimeters and increase its exposure to around 13. Now run the active shade again. Then you can kind of move the point light around. You notice how this green color appears only where the geometry faces the light source, right? So that's what the light facing color is and it can really uh, be used to create some amazing effects. So changing the color of your car paint based on uh, where the light source is. 
For now, let's turn off this uh, light and set the exposure of the map back to 0.35. This falloff parameter here controls the falloff rate of the light facing color of the specular reflection. The higher the value, the narrower the region. So at one, you only get the flip-flop color as the color of the specular reflection. And as you decrease it towards zero, you start to blend in the light facing color as well. Let's set it to around 0.7 for now. Now it's time to add some flakes. I'm gonna increase the flakes density to around 0.4. So you can have more flakes and normal randomized to 0.5 so you can actually see the flakes a bit more obviously. You notice you normally use the same color of the specular layer for the color of the flakes as well. But because the IOR value is higher, around 100, you can see the flakes independently from the specular layer. In the flakes section, you notice we have the flip-flop, light-facing color and falloff, which are operating exactly like the same set of parameters in the specular section. To see how they work, Let's set the flakes color to white and uh, connect the same ramp RGB node to the flakes flip-flop. Use the same green color as the light facing color for the flakes and decrease the fall off to around 0.6. Uh, to see the individual flakes, actually, let's increase the scale to 0.5. Now we have modulated the flakes color using flip-flop and light-facing parameters. So the flakes that are oriented towards the light source become green, the flakes at the glancing angles are pink, and the parallel flakes to the viewing direction are blue. For now, let's set the uh, flakes color to red so we can take a look at the parameters available in the flakes section. Now disconnect the ramp RGB from flakes flip-flop and make sure light facing and flip-flop colors are set to white and set the falloff back to default of one. This scale value scales the flake structure up or down smaller values zoom out of the map giving a larger number of flakes. Right now the scale is set to 0.5 and we can actually see the individual flakes. If increased to something like one, obviously we get even bigger flakes. We can set the scale to obviously smaller values to point some like 0.1 to get smaller flakes or to very small values like 0.001, which are kind of more realistic and the range of values that you kind of need to work. It obviously depends on the scene scale and stuff like that, but normally something like 0.001 would work. Okay, now let's use 0.5 while we go through these parameters. Density controls the density of the flakes. There will be no flakes if it is zero. And as we increase the value towards one, we get more and more flakes. And the surface is fully covered with flakes at one. Let's set um, this value to 0.4. Layer specifies the number of flake layers. The flake at the deep layer are covered by the ones closest to the surface. When set to one, we only get one layer of flakes. At two, we have two layers. And at three, three layers, one on top of another. Let's set it back to one for now. Normal randomize randomizes the orientation of the flakes at lower values like 0.1 the flakes have roughly the same orientation and at values closer to one the flakes will be oriented more randomly. Uh, normally lower randomized values like 0 0.1, 0 0.05, 0 0.2 make the uh, flakes to be less obvious and you know more subtle and as you increase the volume the flakes become more you know opaque, more visible. So you normally want to use, you know, lower values like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. I'm going to set the randomized parameter to 0.1 and use 001 as the scale and set the flake and specular colors to that bright blue.
If we want to change this metallic blue, let's say to a metallic red, it would be fairly simple to do. Let's duplicate the carpent shader and assign it to the shader ball geometry. Disconnect the ramp node from this new shader and uh, set the specular falloff back to one and specular light facing color back to white. Use this dark red as the base color and this bright red as the specular and flex color. Actually, you can find this color palette in the uh, scene asset folder and then images folder of the project files that you have downloaded. Now let's see what we get. And here's our red metallic carpet shader. So that's about carpet shader in Arnold for 3ds Max. See you next time. Thanks for watching this free video tutorial from MoGraphPlus.com. If you are interested in learning Arnold for 3ds Max fundamentally, please make sure to check out our comprehensive introduction to Arnold for 3ds Max course, which is a massive 8 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Arnold for 3ds Max thoroughly.